Right. Well, first of all, thanks for uh, joining us here. No problem. Thanks yeah. for having me. <laughs> um, I would like to go back, well, all the way back for when you uh, left Toronto. That was in 2003, right? 2000, yeah, 2003, 2002, 2003, yeah. Right, you moved over to New York. Mm -hmm. And um, when I read your bio, it said that you eventually landed uh, an internship at, at Cutting Room. Yeah. Right. And it said that you finagled your way into it. Can you tell us a bit more about the, the story behind that? How much time do you have? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Um, I've been going to New York since 2000. My boy Lou was just a friend of mine that I met through music. Um, I used to go visit him and look for music and buy records. And uh, he introduced me to a producer at the time who was very hot and up and coming by the name of Ayatollah. People might be familiar with him. He produced Miss Fat Booty for Most Def and a lot of the raucous stuff that was coming out, like The Life with Styles P and Pharaoh. And um, he introduced me to Ayatollah and Ayatollah used to take me to sessions when I used to visit New York. And, and he was doing a lot of good records at that time. When I moved to New York, I went to 35 studios, had 35 resumes, and I was determined to get an internship. Went to all of them in one day, not one of them called me back. At the end of the day, I told us like, hey, come meet me at this studio, the cutting room, I'm doing a session. This studio wasn't even on my list. Went through, said, what the hell, let me give him a, a resume. Next day they call me back. They're like, hey, you want an internship? And I'm like, hell yeah. And um, that studio at the time was exactly what I wanted to move to New York for. Because in instantly, I was in sessions with De La Soul and Most Def and Talib Kweli. And um, yeah, it was... I wanted to move to New York to produce and be around all the artists I grew up listening to and it literally put me right in the mix of that. And I started off as a scrub, so I was making coffee and going on runs and doing a lot of stuff for how we call it bitch work, you know, cleaning toilets and all the not, you know, the not fun stuff and not getting paid for it because that's how you, you know, you got to pay your dues. And then luckily after about a couple weeks, I got a paid job. Started paying me, I started engineering, then I started managing the studio. And uh, then I started running sessions and I made a lot of connections. And because of that studio, that's how I met Pumpkinhead. That's how I met Master Ace, which led to me and him working together and me producing on A Long Hot Summer. And, uh, you know, he didn't have any budget left to pay me for the beat. So he said, instead of me giving you money, how about we do a trade? And I was like, cool. And the song that he ended up doing for me was Nostalgia. So, um, Everything works out in crazy ways, so I have to shout out my boy Lou and Ayatola for really starting off my career in uh, in hip hop in New York. Cool. And um, well, Orange Moon over over Brooklyn. Um, that was your first album as a producer. What was that like for you? What was um, how did you experience that? Basically, that was another benefit of working at the Cutting Room. Um, I had given beats to Pumpkinhead when I first moved to New York and because I worked at the studio we had you know million dollar recording consoles and when there was no clients in there I had access to the studio so I'd be like yo Pumpkinhead come through and let's use this studio and, and use all this good equipment and record songs that started off that album it was a five song demo it had um, I just want to rhyme MC rock rock on a core a hardcore of that album was was a five song demo mixed and professionally you know sounding that we pitched to a label all because of the cutting room we didn't have to pay for the time and that studio charged like 200 bucks an hour so we were just like let's let's use it and uh, we pitched that demo to soul spasm There's, they gave us a budget a little budget and they're like finish the album and that's how orange moon over brooklyn came to be pumpkin didn't even want to name it that um because that was his album that was supposed to be like five years ago but it never came out and i was like that title's so dope like Let's run with that concept. And, uh, you know, shouts to Pumpkinhead. He took a chance on a completely unknown producer, which I was at the time. And, uh, you know, it's great to see people even like yourself bringing that album up because it means that I guess some people, you know, liked it and felt it. And, you know, that's dope. So shouts to Pumpkinhead. Cool. And if you look back to that whole project, um, being the producer that you are now, would you have done things differently having the skills and the knowledge that you have now? Absolutely. I mean, but that I think that's an artist or producer trait. As you grow and get better, you're always going to look back on your older work and be like, oh man, I could have did this better. The bass line could have been tighter. That snare could have hit harder. All I do is critique my old work. Like a beat I made last week, I'm like, oh man, I can't even listen to that. It could be better. So 
that's with every project, you know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely have grown as a producer and it's not as painful now to listen back to projects. Like when I listen to the execution and Double Barrel, I love those albums, you know what I'm saying? There's always going to be things I wish I did differently, but it's not as, when I listen to Orange Moon, I'm like, ooh, I was still learning how to make beats and, you know, still figuring out how to, to really, really make stuff knock. And um, so, yeah, definitely, when you look back, you always wish you could change things. All right, just just a cheeky question. Mm. If you look back to everything that you've done, you just mentioned that you mm. don't always like your own beats. Mm. Um, is there a specific track that you did that you wish now that you would have done it completely different? Um, hmm. That's a good question. You know what, I'm, I'm very lucky because I have um, a friend of mine, his name's Shiloh, he rhymes, he's also on my new album, and uh, he's a rapper, producer, DJ from Toronto, and he taught me how to make beats, taught me how to use the MPC, and he's always been involved in every project, so it's kind of like uh, having a crew of people, but instead of a yes man, or people just saying it's hot, it's hot, just to, you know, be cool with you, he's always held me down in the sense that he's like, no. Like, that beat is whack, don't use it. And I have a good crew of people that are always honest with me. So I'm, I'm happy to say that there's not a song on any of those albums in the past that I hear and I'm like, whoa, that shouldn't have been on there. Um, the closest thing I could say, and this is this is me and Tori always argued, is there's a song called Crashing Down on Double Barrel that I love with all my heart. That song is dope. I just felt it shouldn't have been on that album. Just because it was 13 shots of adrenaline and then it was a a song that, you know, kind of energy-wise wasn't the same. And, um, you know, like I said, love the song to death, but that was the one thing I was like, I probably wouldn't have put that song. If it was just up to me and not me and Tor, I would have taken that song off the album. Cool. And grabbing back to a Port Authority, that was received very well, especially here in Europe. Um, you had a list of very big names on there. Um, is there a specific, uh, well, artist that you loved working with? on that list of uh, names? I got to shout all of them out. I mean, it was great to work with all those artists. Um, every session with every artist is different. It's different energy. Um, you know, I can definitely mention some highlights. Um, one of the, the most memorable sessions was definitely working with Large Professor because he is an incredible influence on me and one of the greatest, you know, hip hop icons to me. Like he brought out Nas, his beats, main source, like all that stuff is, his energy is so natural, you know what I'm saying? And when he came through to my my crappy studio and recorded the vocals, like it was just an experience. I had a hard time just sitting there and recording it because I was so excited. I was just like, Large Professor's rapping on my beat right now at my crib. And my, I remember my boy Theo was there and we were just looking at each other the whole time, like, is this actually happening? And, um, you know, he's just such a cool dude. And, you know, that was definitely a standout session. But then, you know, working with all those people, you know, OC, Master Ace, Cool G Rap, like I went to Cool G Rap's house and we recorded the song there and chain smoked Newports together and talked about hip hop. It was, you know, it was, it was crazy. So yeah, that, that whole album was an incredible experience. So, yeah. Cool. And uh, the words Port Authority 2 have already been dropped. Yep. Can we expect another list like that? Yes. Yes, um, you're going to see, I'm not going to say any names like I've been telling people because I just rather things be solidified before I mention names and shoot myself in the foot. Um, what, what I can say is you can expect some repeat appearances um, and some new people and sticking to the same formula. Some people like to say that Marco Polo finds old school rappers and brings them back out. I think that's a bullshit statement. I work with people that I think are, are talented and still have something to contribute. Um, Tori is trying to make me laugh right now, but I'm not going to let him. He's a big jerk. But uh, yeah, the official name um, is PA2 Escape from New York. That's the name of the album. Uh, I've started working on it. I have about four or five songs done. And I have some, I have to me one of the best MCs that ever do it. I already recorded a song for me for the album that I'm very excited about. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. For